Welcome, everyone. This is Dawn Marie, and you have joined us for the next segment of In the Know with the Bullioness. I'm a 7K Metals Silver Associate and Top Recruiter here at 7K Metals, and yesterday we did the premiere of the radio show and came back with rave reviews. We wanted to continue the conversation with our very special guest, A.G. Leveraged. A.G., are you in? I am. Happy Friday, Don. How are you? Hey, I'm great. Happy Friday to you. Today's date is Friday, September 20th, 2019. And yesterday, you just shared with us some very enlightening information that is valuable for everybody to know. And today, we want to touch on a few things. And we have decided that we're going to do our best to keep this to uh, about 15 minutes at the most. So. For those that are listening, we know you have full days and your plates are full, so we want to be very mindful of that. So with that said, let's begin. So, A.G., in your opinion, how much precious metals should a person, just the average person, seek to save? Great question, Don. The average American has no silver. So even if a person were to have 10 ounces of silver, they already have more than 1% of our population. Unfortunately, here in America, we are not taught to value or to save in the form of precious metals. And that's a shame because the world over, uh, they they tend to understand the importance of saving in precious metals. Um, So if we were to follow the example of central banks, they recently were were legally mandated to hold 10% in precious metals for all their equities, all their derivatives. Uh, For every single sort of of, of, uh, paper derivative program that they hold, that they sell, that they use, including the fiat, uh, they were supposed to have 10% minimum. Now that's closer to 20%. So the average person, the average individual, the average family should hold 10% of whatever their assets in precious metals in their possession, in their home. Now that may sound like a sizable thing, for a working professional, for a working professional couple, for someone who's got a career. Because if he adds up all those assets and it comes up to a sizable number, he's going to say, wow, that's a lot of money and precious metals that I'm supposed to have to, to safeguard my, my derivatives. And that could be the case. Um, but I'm always, I'm always thinking start small. Think, think baby steps. Uh, through 7K metals, a person gets on auto pay and they get delivered an ounce a month minimum. They could always opt to having five ounces per month delivered to their home. And if that's the case, five ounces after 12 months is a sizable amount, and after five years, it's a sizable amount. So even if somebody, uh, they come up with a, with a big number after they add up all their assets with their home, their mutual funds, or personal savings in their bank, everything gets added up and it's a sizable number and 10% of that is still a sizable number. They work at it slowly on a month by month basis. And eventually they're going to get to the point where their dreams come true and they, and they, they're able to have a sizable amount of, of savings in their own home, in their own possession. You know, it's so true. I have been a silver stacker for only three years since I was introduced to 7K Metals and started on my budget, uh, continue on my budget, and I'm surprised uh, how much I have accumulated in just three years. So it's that auto-saver program, you're not even thinking about it, and it's just, even if it's just a little bit at a time, it adds up. So with that said, we have bullion, we have collector coins, we have different denominations and weights, um, and ones from around the world. So what um, denominations do you recommend? What kind of percentages, what breakdown would you recommend the average person stack away? You know, Don, before I even go there, if I may just finish on on what you, you, you made a good point. We're not disciplined enough to get online and order medals for ourselves. We're not savvy enough to go to a local brick-and-mortar coin salesperson and and buy metals from them. We're not sophisticated enough to do that. These are the reasons, and I just want to add to what you said, these are the reasons why a program or or a club membership through 7K Metals where you get a monthly delivery automatically, uh, these these are the reasons why it makes so much sense to to have an avenue uh, like 7K Metals. Um, Okay, so going back to your question, what denomination, what, what should the split up be? Um, 
so when I personally started stacking, I started with uh, 20 ounce bars, five ounce bars, 100 ounce bars, because I wanted to accumulate as much weight as I could. I didn't understand at the moment that the most recognizable silver coins or silver are in the form of coins in the form of one ounce coins. I also didn't understand that during a time of emergency, during some sort of economic circumstance, uh, you want to have a coin, an actual silver ounce coin available, as opposed to a 100 ounce bar. But I accumulated weight in the very beginning, and that's how I started. Uh, then I learned that the American Silver Eagle, the Canadian Maple Leaf, and the, uh, the, the, the British Britannica, these are the most recognizable co silver coins uh, currency for each country, uh, most recognizable around the world. They're the ones that pretty much anyone across the board would recognize, and you could transfer back into fiat dollars if you needed to. So I believe that that's where you, that's where you want to start. Um, the appreciation and love of, of coins, of silver, of, uh, uh, of precious metals, thereafter climbs in, in the direction of maybe gold or in the direction of antiquity, of, of older coins, in, in the direction of low mintages, of rarities, of slab slash graded coins, where suddenly you're getting a denomination that where there was only 5,000 mints or it's a rarity under 10,000 minted in the first place or you go toward, towards foreign coins. So here in America, anything that is pre-1964 or older, be it a 50-cent piece, a quarter, a dime, all of those are 90% silver. A lot of times in our pockets, uh, we have coins. And if we look through them, anything 1964 or before that is 90% silver. So naturally, it's worth more than the standard dime or the standard quarter or the standard 50-cent piece. We just need to start noticing those things. So that's an incredible way to accumulate weight. Now, such is the case also in foreign countries. There was a year in the past where the precious metals was removed from the, from the coinage. Um, and so whether it's Canadian or British or, or any, any island for that matter, Panama, Latin America, Spain, any part of Europe, there's a lot of foreign coins that have a percentage of silver, and those are pretty fantastic to start collecting because of the value, the historical value, what the politics was like at the time, uh, what the history of those countries are. All those things are intriguing. So suddenly we go from a preparedness where I'm stacking silver and weight for insurance just in case, to suddenly it becomes a hobby, it becomes a pastime, it becomes a, a real passion where you start learning about foreign countries or about numismatic coins or about collectibles or about rarities and so forth. You know, a minute ago you mentioned that the average person isn't sophisticated or disciplined enough to do this all the time. Um, I wanted you, if you could, touch on also that uh, there are counterfeit out there, and the average person probably isn't going to be able to understand the difference between that. Um, so one of the great things about 7K Metals is that we uh, provide authentic, guaranteed coins. But tell us a little bit about how how common it is um, for counterfeit to be found, and how do they test the coins? Counterfeit coins are prevalent, and nowadays the word sophisticated comes back in when it comes to some of the Chinese uh, coins that are that are duplicated. Um, I, I know some friends who collect Morgans, and they collect graded Morgans, and nowadays, there are some, some Chinese uh, Morgans that are here on the marketplace that look so legitimate, and they nearly weigh what the silver coin weighs. Um, there, there's a big black market for, for, uh, for uh, fakes out there, and, and they're very sophisticated. Now, being able to test silver itself could be done uh, by weighing the, the coin itself. Uh, again, going back to 7K metals, all of these coins through 7K Metals are tested before they're sent out. The, the business relationship with NGC that grades the slapped coins that a person gets delivered once a month, those come through NGC, so those are by definition silver, real silver. So where we obtain our silver matters. Because e even if somebody said to me, I'm going to go out and grab some silver on my own, I'm going to buy it online, or I'm going to go through, to a, through a, a brick-and-mortar store, how do, you, how do I know for certain that, I, A, I'm not getting ripped off, and, B, that I'm buying something of value, that I'm getting the real thing? How, how do I know? And so 
that's another reason why this membership through 7K Metals, this partnership with 7K Metals, is so invaluable. Uh, there, there's a lot of fakes out there, and, and right now, remember, because the, the coin, an average coin goes between 18 to 21 22 depending on what it is a person is buying. If it's a round, it's going to be at 18 and a half to 19 and a half dollars If it's a silver eagle or a Canadian maple or Botanica, it's going to be 21 to 23 $24, depending on the condition of the coin. But how do I know if it's real? How do I know that, that, that it's legitimate? So the, the relationship with 7K Metals matters. Uh, it counts because then we know we're getting something real, something legitimate, and then we can go ahead and compare it with some of the other online stores, and we'll see that we're getting a genuine wholesale price through 7K Metals. Excellent, excellent information. Okay, and the question I've been waiting for all day is for you to give us the goods. Where should a person hide their precious metals? That's the thing. When our dreams come true and suddenly I, I, I'm your friend, Don, and I've come to you and you've convinced me to start putting some of my savings and, and transferring it from paper fiat into metals. And, and we sit together and you say to me, you know what, you should have at least 30000 in metals in your own possession in your own home. And let's assume that I get to that degree. I get to that point. Where do I put it? Not only is it heavy, but it's bulky. And so this is something we touched on yesterday. Myself as a builder, we've had the chance to bury safes underneath people's homes, put them in backyards under a tree, uh, hide them behind a microwave oven, behind a range, within a dishwasher, within the refrigerator ice maker. We can get as creative as a person can imagine. Sometimes we bury them within a wall where, where they're, they're gone forever. And we, we go ahead and line the wall so that not even a metal detector can detect it. So it really depends on the, per, the person's comfort level. Sometimes we want to make it where the person has access to it behind a mirror. Uh, sometimes we bury it where the person cannot, ha cannot find it. Our goal is so that even if a sophisticated, there's the word again, a sophisticated uh, thief breaks into a home, he goes to the top shelves of the, the drawers inside of a bedroom. Uh, you know, he goes through the top shelves of, of the home in general. He goes into a closet space. So we want to go and put it in a place that even the most sophisticated sales uh, thief is not going to be able to, to find it, to have access to it. So the person's secured. Um, so where we hide it is up to the person's own creativeness, but part of the responsibility of saving oneself and insuring one's family by going in the direction of precious metals, the second component to that is where do I put it where it's going to remain safe no matter what happens. Do you re recommend safe deposit boxes? I think that during uh, a very thriving economy where real estate is climbing and the stock market is climbing and everything is abundant, then the answer is yes, absolutely. Why not? I think it's a very safe place to keep things. However, when the world is getting topsy-turvy and economies are, 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 are moving up and down, there's a lot of um, instability in the marketplace. When when stock market is has reached apparent highs, when real estate has reached apparent highs and it's now going sideways, and in some counties it's going downward, I think that we need to become a little more responsible with ourselves. Uh, in, in this particular moment in time, companies are given the ability to buy back their own stocks in order to keep their stock price high. In this moment, uh, there's a lot of cheap money, so a lot of these same companies are stretching out themselves and and getting more into debt because of the low interest loans that are available to them. When that begins to occur, I believe it falls on every one of us to become responsible for ourselves and transfer some of that fiat. I didn't say buy. I said transfer. Exchange some of that paper for precious metals that we store and we manage ourselves. Wonderful. NAG, in closing, would you like to give us a wonderful tip of the day this Friday to lead us into the weekend? It's a beautiful day. It's an incredible Friday. Uh, I, um, I, I think this opportunity and everything we do, I think we'd all, we should always be looking to grow and to learn in whatever ways we can. Um, through precious metals, I've had the chance to learn something, to learn about incredible things and to meet unbelievable people, very interesting people. Who, are, who, who tend to be doers, they tend to be business people, they tend to be dynamic, creative people. And 
all of that is is uh, is pretty worthwhile. So it, it isn't just a saving grace to stack precious metals. It also opens up opportunities that we could never have imagined, and we meet interesting people. And suddenly we find ourselves doing research on things that we probably should have known, that, that unfortunately our education system, our society, our television, none of these things show us. They don't, they don't teach us. So it falls on us to be responsible for our own growth, for our own uh, dynamicism. So I say happy Friday and get out there and blow it up and stack and uh, put your weight on. Well, that's what I love about your message. It's never fear-based. It's always balanced. There's always the lining, the silver lining, and a way for us to just be aware of the change that we can make, the power that we have within us to educate ourselves and to educate those that we love and friends and family and so forth beyond. So I'm excited uh, because I spoke to AG Leverage earlier this morning, and we have decided to offer this radio program um, several times a week, if not daily. And again, we'll just do it in 15-minute segments, give you guys some very pertinent information on current affairs that are going on um, on a day-to-day basis and just the information that AG has about the world of precious metals, geopolitics, and so much more. So be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that little bell because that's going to notify you every time a video is uploaded so you'll be one of the first to hear it. And you can go to the website silverpreparedness.com to learn more. That's silverpreparedness.com. Thank you so much, A.G., for joining us again. And until. You're welcome. And until our next show, everyone have a great weekend. Bye for now.